our mind is very good at sorting things. There's a whole variety of impressions that our mind categorizes and bases our understanding of reality on. For example, memories. Memories. What's a memory? Is it an image in your mind? We have dreams. Dreams are also images in the mind. We have flights of fancy. We exercise our imagination. These are also images in the mind. We've got images right now, haven't we? You're seeing this video or you're listening to it. Perhaps it's simply a, a noise image, a noise impression. And we'd say what's happening now is real and everything else is less real. Although we'll divide everything else into relative degrees of reality. For example, we might have a memory of a dream. And the contents of that dream we regard as less real than a memory of a conversation we'd had or of an event. Although sometimes they can get confused. But this is how we build up our reality. It's based on memory and discrimination. If I see an object, I only recognize it as an object because I've seen it before. And if I haven't seen it before, then it will be like something that I've seen before. So my current ideas about what I'm perceiving right now are based on memory. Vasishta continued, the creator is only the mind, devoid of any trace of materiality. One of the reasons why we regard what is happening now as real is because we believe it's material, we believe it's substantial. A memory is not substantial, a dream is not substantial, although at the time both the memory and the dream are substantial. But it seems that materiality passes into non-materiality. In fact, materiality is the hallmark of the reality of the present moment. So it could be argued that materiality, if it exists at all, is a fleeting thing. It comes and goes instantaneously. How materiality can become non-materiality is a bit strange. Perhaps it's easier to assume there's no such thing as materiality at all. Hence, he has no body, or the senses, or vasana, or mental conditioning. Since he had attained liberation at the end of the previous world cycle, there is no memory in him. When there is no memory at all, there is no cause for embodiment. Even if such memory were possible in the creator, even that would be devoid of matter, like a dream city. However, this is said for the sake of argument, memory is impossible in the liberated ones. Obviously, we need to be careful here. It doesn't mean to say that the liberated one lacks the faculty of memory. What it means is that memory no longer contributes to their present sense of being. They are free from memory, just as they're free from all notions of the past. Rama asked, Lord, tell me why is there no memory in them and how the gunas, the building blocks of creation, arise in the absence of memory? So Ram is asking, if the creator has no memory, then how can creation arise? What's it based on? The sister replied, Memory arises only in relation to the objective universe, thus providing the cause and effect sequence. When such an object of perception is itself non-existent, how and where does memory arise or exist? When the truth is that all this is indeed Brahman or the infinite consciousness, there is no room for memory. 
So Vizishta's reply is that creation doesn't arise. Cause and effect is a construction. It's a construction of our organizing mind. As enlightenment practitioners, what we must do is look into this. This is a very powerful topic. Look into the phenomenon of memory and how it defines our identity. Be aware of how the mind differentiates, how it discriminates. This is a very useful thing for getting by in the consensus reality. But spiritually we need to step back from it. Appreciate that there's just this stream of images, this stream of experiencing. And the differentiation that we make does not exist in reality. It's all images. There's a huge creative explosion of images, of impressions happening from moment to moment. The cognitive aspect of consciousness arranges this, puts it into order, gives us ideas of cause and effect of the past and present, of real and unreal, of material and immaterial. So look into that, acknowledge that, just simply witness it, simply, simply observe it without getting caught up in the discriminations and distinctions that we make.